Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the City of El Centro Veterans Day Ceremony. I am Cheryl Villegas Walker, and I have the honor of serving as the Mayor of El Centro. I want to acknowledge the council members who are here this morning on this very, very important day. Sylvia Marroquin, Council Member Martha Cardenas Singh, Councilman Edgard Garcia, and Mayor Pro Tem Tomas Oliva. I also want to thank the many, many sponsors, city staff, and volunteers who made this ceremony possible, as well as the Mobile Vietnam Memorial Wall. Thank you. <laughs> Veterans Day. Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November 11, 1919, which marked the first anniversary of the end of World War I. We remember World War I, the war to end all wars. And yet World War I was followed by World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and others. So we are here today to say thank you. Thank you to our veterans for their selfless bravery, commitment, and dedication to our nation. say thank you for their sacrifice and service so that you and I, so that we can stand here today enjoying and celebrating the freedoms and blessings of living in this, the greatest nation. It's also a time for us to say thank you to the family and friends of our veterans and for their sacrifices, the separation from their loved ones, missed holidays and celebrations, missed beginnings and endings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today's ceremony takes place in the shadow of the Vietnam Memorial Wall. Over 58,000 Americans who gave their lives in service to, their country, to this country or who remain missing in action. What a powerful, powerful reminder of those who paid the ultimate price. Today's Veterans Day, and this wall in particular, invoke, I think, for many of us, powerful, powerful images. The protests against the war and the brutal realities of that war that were broadcast nightly into our living rooms. Ultimately, the fall of Saigon and the U.S. withdrawal from Vietnam, which was followed by decades of attempts at reconciliation and trying to make right for the veterans who fought in Vietnam in an unpopular war and returned home to a country where they were not as well respected and as well received and applauded for their service as they should have been. So different, so different from every war prior to that time. The Vietnam Memorial Wall and Exhibit is, I hope, in a small way, our opportunity for a do-over, our chance to get it right 
and to honor especially our Vietnam veterans for their service. Thank you, all of our veterans, today and always. Thanks to all of you for being here. I want to say thank you to my husband for his love. I want to say thank you to my dad, served in the Navy during the Korean War. Thanks to all of you who have taken time out of your day to stop, honor, pause, remember. Thank you all. God bless you and God bless America. At this time, I'd like to call up our Mayor Pro Tem, Tomas Oliva, to lead us in an invocation. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather and recognize the men and women who have fought for our freedom. They have sacrificed so much for us, their health, their youth, and for some, their lives. For the veterans that are still with us, we ask that you continue to bless them and watch over them and their families. For those of you who have called home, may they continue to rest in peace, knowing that we have not forgotten them. At this moment, I'd like to ask, if you did have a loved one, a veteran, that you have lost, please shout out their names now. John Sager. Frank Gutierrez. Victor Zaragoza. May they continue to rest in your glory. In your name we pray, amen. So at this time, if you all will please join me in saluting our flag, right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. It's an honor now to introduce our next speaker, specifically because he is what some may call a very decent man. <laughs> he may entertain us. He may inspire us. Uh, he will be here to share his experiences, uh, his journey as a veteran, uh, but also as an advocate for veteran services and benefits. And so, without further ado, Mr. Ernie Mariscal. Good afternoon. Such a great day. Real quick, before I even begin, I'd like to uh, ask all the Vietnam veterans, if you can, please stand. I want to say this, welcome home and thank you. And the reason I say this is because I served, I, went, I came in in 1991 and I retired in 2012. See, and the Vietnam veterans, what they did, they ensured that every service member that came home from combat were treated with respect. And they did that, and I thank you for that, sirs. Men and women, thank you so much, and I salute you for that. Hmm. Getting a little fired up. First off, I want to say thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a great day. It's such an honor and a blessing to be able to be here and to speak to all of you. So we're going to talk about veterans. That title right there is something that is earned and never given. And for those that earn it, become a part of a family of warriors. Because all of us that served overseas or at home and never went to combat or went to combat, see, we signed that dotted line to sacrifice our time away from family and even signed to give everything, even our life, 
for our beautiful country. Now, we do have issues, right, that we need to address. And we have that 22 per day. And if you haven't heard that, it's 22 veterans on average take their own lives. And it breaks my heart every time. But I believe that I have a solution for that. You see, it takes about six months for us to become warriors. When it's time for us to get out, they should give us six months to become civilians again. And I believe those numbers would come down dramatically. And the reason I bring that up is because I almost became one of, one of those statistics. You see, when I retired in 2012, after serving 21 years, I was so excited getting home. I figured that people were gonna be like hiding under my bed, in my closet, banging on my door, asking me, man, we want you to come work for us. But guess what, none of that happened. And when that didn't happen, I started questioning my accomplishments. I started questioning who I was. And worst of all, I started questioning my worth. And my days started getting darker. I started drinking heavily. I started self-medicating myself, getting more depressed, feeling sorry for myself. And then on my darkest day, when I didn't even want to be on this earth any longer, I got a phone call. They were asking me if I would go speak at the local high school about my military career. At first I wanted to say no. Something told me to say yes. And when I went to the school and I stood in front of those students, I saw me as a child. And I remember when I was a child, I wished somebody would come to my classroom and tell me that I could be whatever I want to be in this world. But I just got to put the hard work in because hard work neutralizes a hard life. And also, I felt peace. I felt a sense of belonging. And best of all, I felt a sense of worth. So I told them about my military career. And after I did, a student raised her hand and said, what is a veteran? Now, I served with a lot of great men and women throughout this country and around the world. But one story stood out. And that story is one cold morning, Fort Benning, Georgia. We were getting ready to do physical training which is PT. And they introduced me to a new guy, Sergeant Chatham. They brought him to me and they were like, hey, Sergeant Mighty Scott, Sergeant Chatham's gonna be doing uh, PT with you today. Now we have an unwritten rule in the United States Army. It's called, when we get a new guy, you smoke him. And what that means, you either make him pass out or throw up when you do PT. It's one of the two, something's going down today, right? So I was like, how you doing, Sergeant Chatham? I'm sorry, Mighty Scott, nice to meet you. We're gonna go on about a four to five mile run. Now, you're probably not gonna believe me, but I used to run a lot. <laughs> Might not look like it, right? So we get ready to go. We start our run and we're going at a good pace because you know I don't wanna to give too much because I don't wanna be the loser out of this. So we keep going. And in our way back, there's this one obstacle that I wanna hit. The name of that obstacle is called Cardiac Hill. And the reason it's named Cardiac Hill is because it's broken a lot of hearts. So me and Char Sergeant Chatham hit the bottom of Cardiac Hill and we take off, we're both going neck and neck. We're giving everything we got because that's what you're supposed to do in life when any time you hit an obstacle in life. So we get to the top of the hill and we got about another quarter mile to go and we end our run. And then I ask him, hey, how you feeling brother? He goes, I'm feeling pretty good, it's just my leg bothering me a little bit. And when he said that, I had this big old smile on my face because I was like, I won this battle. So I was like, hey, well, I'll meet you at the motor pool, 09, because we're both instructors at the time. So I get there first. Sergeant Chatham walks in through the door, and as he's walking towards me, I can see him limping still. And I got a big old smile on my face. And as he gets closer, I'm like, how you feeling? He's like, hey, you know what, my legs still bother me. And then I'm like, ah, you want me to go get you some tissues or something? And, you know, we both laugh, and he told me to go do something with myself, but, you know. And so he, he gets closer, he sits right in front of me, and then he leans down and starts lifting up his pad leg. That smile that I had, that pride, all faded away. Sergeant Chatham had a prosthetic leg. This guy could have said, hey, Sergeant Mighty Scott, can you slow it down? I got a prosthetic leg. Hey, can you take it easy, because I got a prosthetic leg. 
And then he tells me a year earlier when he was in Iraq, his unit was ambushed. RPG penetrated his Bradley, blew his leg clean off. He said the first thing he tried to do was stand up. The first thing he tried to do was stand up so he could go check on his men. And then he tells me he got sent to Germany. He had to learn how to walk again. He had to learn how to be a father again and a husband again. Doing all these things and not once did he ever feel sorry for himself. So when somebody asks me what a veteran is, I tell them that story because that's who we are. See, we adapt, we overcome. Any obstacle in front of us, we attack it. We attack the hill. And if we can't get in through that way, we flank it. Remember your training, brothers and sisters. If you're in the dark right now, become the light. Move forward, fight forward. And to those that are in the darkness that it never served, I can tell you this, keep fighting, stay in the fight, fight forward. Why? Because you are worth it. Every day that we wake up is a privilege. Every day we should be grateful of life. Because I can tell you right now, there's a lot of people on their deathbed wishing they had more time in life while we have people complaining about life. So all I say is this, every day, maximize the day and let's not complain about it. Let's push forward. We should be unified together as Americans, lifting each other up. Because that's what it's all about. Because, you know, without community, there's no unity. All right? That's my time. My name is Ernie Mariscal. Please find me on social media, Ernie Mariscal. I have a website, keepupthefightapparel.com. I love you all. Thank you so much. God bless you all. This time I'll ask the members of the El Central City Council to come forward. We're each going to be reading the names of those veterans whose names will be engraved or whose names were engraved either in 2020 when we were unable to hold this ceremony or 2021. Okay. So I will be reading space numbers 73 through 76 if the families are present um, if you could please stand. Space 73, Bianca Valenzuela. Space 74, Leroy Lopez. 75, Joe Salazar. 76, Gregorio Castillo. 77, Baltazar Perdomo. 78, Robert Gonzalez. 79, Maher Avidia. 80, Richard Macon. 81, Mario Miranda. 82, Terry Ryder. 83, Ernest Zinn. 84, Robert Douthit. 85, William Quiros. 86, Joaquin Tarasas. Next in space 87, Ricardo Lara. Space 88, Luis Avalos Jr. Space 89, Walter S. Vasquez. Space 90, Alex Mark Justman. Space 91, James F. Newell. Space 92, Philip Newell Jr. Space 93, Stephen S. Proscal. Space 94, George S. Proscal. Space 95, Raymond Loera. Space 96, Raymond R. Loera. Space 97, Jose R. Ortiz. Space 98, Robert Lizarraga. Space 99, John Jack McConnell. And Space 100, David 
Harris Pangle. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I'm Edgar Garcia, El Centro City Council member. I'd like to start by dedicating this to my father, Edward Ricardo Garcia, United States Army. I'm honored and privileged to read this list. Space 101, Roberto S. Amaya. Space 102, William G. Nolta. Space 103, Fernando A. Velasquez. Space 104, David Cisneros. Space 105, Gilbert Morales. Space 106, Leonardo Siqueiros. Space 107, Daniel S. Ochoa Sr. Space 108, Estras A. Agundes. Space 109, Carl C. Danese. Space 110, Juan Manuel Mendez. Space 111, Chris Vasquez. Space 112, Joshua Vasquez. Space 113, Humbert Hernandez. Space 114, Amanda King. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. City Council Member Marta Cardenas Singh, and most importantly, daughter of Vietnam veteran Abelardo Cardenas. Space 115, Gerardo, I'm sorry, Space 115, Gerald F. Keating. Space 116, Frederick R. Rooney. Space 117, Ronald E. McAllister. Space 118, Richard Martinez. Space 119, Edward Castillo Rubio. Space 120, Thomas M. Rubio. Space 121, Frederick R. Granados. Space 122, Aurelio A. Jimenez. Space 123, Robert Ramirez. Space 124, Michael O. Owellish. Space 125, Jesus A. Chavaria. Space 126, Frank H. Gutierrez. Space 127, L. William Bowman. Space 128, Richard Garavito. Good morning, everyone. Council Member Sylvia Marroquin. Space 129, Daniel G. Fernandez. Space 130, Ruben C. Fernandez. Space 131, John A. Newell. Space 132, Carter S. Samra. Space 133, Adolfo Valenzuela. Space 134, Philip B. Beckett. Space 135, Cindy Walker. Space 136, Raleigh G. Walker. Space 137, Eder Mendoza. Space 138, Antonio G. Salgado. Space 139, Rowdy Aaron Nixon. Space 140, Salvador G. Zamora. Space 141, Ruben Hernandez. And finally, Space 142, Joe Duran. I'd like to thank all of these service members for their great service and dedicated service to our great nation. And I'd also like to include my father, Air Force veteran Rafael Marroquin Sr., who is now deceased, and my brother Rafael Marroquin Jr., who also served in the Air Force. Thank you.
But I'll work on the emotion today. My niece and nephew were just deployed, and today the ceremony hits a little differently. I'm sorry. I just want to thank you all for your attendance. Um, my city staff, we've been working really hard to make this event possible. I think our council and our city manager that sits in the back, um, thank you so much for being here today. We invite you to the Mobile Vietnam Memorial Wall as well as our veterans wall in the, in the back. If you need transportation, please know that we have um, our golf carts that um, we will be shuttling you back and forth. Um, thank you all so much for your attendance. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. This concludes our um, Vietnam Memorial presentation for this morning. Please, we welcome you to visit reminisce and thank our veterans and with this we will conclude our city of el centro veterans day ceremony thank you all for being here